I'm Daryl West, Senior Fellow in the Center for Technology Innovation at the Brookings Institution, and I study digital policy and social media platforms and the effect they have on communications. Violent content can radicalize people by giving them an object for their rage. There are many angry people around the world. They're looking for scapegoats to blame for various problems that they are experiencing. And when they see violent content directed against groups they hate, it becomes a way for them to understand their own outrage and figure out how to act on that outrage. And so violent content can be a powerful teacher of how you express your outrage. I think people have to be careful about sharing violent content because they may see it as being helpful to their friends, but there may be other people who view that content and it inflames their passions. It could radicalize them. It could turn them in a more extreme direction. And so it's one thing to create the content, but ordinary people often are the individuals who disseminate that content. And we have to be careful that violent content doesn't get disseminated too broadly because it could really damage the way people see events and it makes people feel badly to see these types of graphic depictions put online. Journalists have to be very careful on utilizing violent content because they have to understand the emotional impact that type of content has on viewers. They have to be judicious in making sure the information they put out is accurate because in the world of AI it is possible to manufacture fake videos. Uh, they also have to be careful uh, to not use violent content just as a way to sensationalize all the human suffering that is taking place in this kind of armed conflict. Social media algorithms are good at identifying violent content, but not in understanding the motives of the people who put that content online. So for example, there have been many historic atrocities we want to remember them, and so there is violent content and graphic descriptions of past injustices as a way to remind us all not to forget the atrocities that took place. But algorithms cannot really distinguish violent content intended for instructional purposes or to help us remember versus violent content that is designed to radicalize people. And so social media platforms have a real difficulty of identifying which of the violent contents they need to take down immediately in order to not further the radicalization of people around the world. In recent years, a number of the large platforms have fired the human safety divisions that have overseen content and taken some of that content down. Some of them also have scaled back their own content moderation practices in the sense that things that they used to take down, they're no longer taking down. And so this is really creating a problem. At a time when extremist organizations are posting violent content online, we often don't have the human overseers that can spot that content and take it down immediately, or we have the platforms deciding not to remove objectionable content. The platforms need to understand that at a time of crisis, people turn to social media in order to get the information. Like people want to know what's going on right away. And so they have a responsibility during times of war in particular to be very helpful of people, of making sure that violent content is not put online that could radicalize them or inflame public passions surrounding that war. They need to do a much better job moderating the content in order to make sure people are not subjected to these horrific images that we have seen in recent years.